deer dancing to Roy's rattle and hum. We're on an early fallow rut recce. How to defeat direct action. In a special Field Sports Nation report, we speak to an ex-domestic terrorism detective about ways to prepare for masked antis who are looking to disrupt, provoke, frighten and commit crime. I'm here at Liverpool Town Hall where tonight they are debating why they stopped the British Shooting Show from exhibiting at the local exhibition centre and why they don't like shooting very much. We've got news, we've got hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. hear the echo of fallow rotting in the woods at the moment, you will hear Lupton and his rhythm sticks. We don't think we've ever gone out for any rut of any deer in any part of the world and gone, the conditions are just perfect. So on the 13th of October at 6.45 in the morning in Sussex it is 15 degrees centigrade and the chance of a mature fallow buck getting a sweat on is pretty remote. A bit warm, isn't it? It's very warm. Very, very warm. For this time of year, unfortunately, it is incredibly warm. I think we're about 15 degrees this morning. David got here bright and breezy, and um, he'd been sitting out for 15 minutes before I arrived, and he's heard a couple of grunts. Whether or not that's just a little bit of indigestion, we don't know. <laughs> you see that coming a mile. I know. It was set up, wasn't it? But no, so we should be in the start of the fallow rut at the moment. Um, and I'm hoping that we might be able to get a bit of action today. So we've dusted off the old antlers and we've come out. Um, we're going to go to a couple of little rutting stands, just have a bit of a rattle, see if we get any reaction. Hopefully we'll hear some grunting. Um, as I say, this, this warm weather's not helping. Uh, it should really be frozen. Yeah, we should have a lovely frost and a nice crisp morning. And then I think it would be a different story, but I know in other places that the rut is kicking off um, and it, it's just uh, just starting off quite nicely. Um, as I say, if there are bucks grunting here, then there is a chance we may be able to get a call on one and um, get a bit of a reaction, but we'll see. And the other thing I need to do is obviously, um, if we get a chance, is shoot a few foxes as well. So it should be a fun morning. Jason Doyle recently described hunting fallow deer to David as like hunting teddy bears. Sure, these may not be as tough as Seeker in the Wicklow Mountains, but they are pretty skittish, thanks to the plague of dog walkers in the area. Just spotted a little group of fallow just under the oak trees there, so they're obviously out just clearing up the acorns there. There's a couple of bucks that we can see, so I'm not overly fussed about um, taking too much. If there's a pricket, obviously we'll take a pricket, and if there's a poor sorrel, we'll take a poor sorrel. But if, there's a, if it's decent bucks there, then obviously we'll leave them, but we need to get a little bit closer and have a proper assessment. We are going to have to be crafty, and if we're not, Roy has written permission to smack David. <laughs> you explain yourself. Watch <laughs> out. <laughs> the guys from Viperflex asked me if there's anything that I wanted printed on my sticks. You've and by I've, putting that on it. I've personalised my sticks by having my official pair of David Poking sticks. So you are in big trouble now, mate. That might actually work to our advantage. All the sheep started running into the colour. I think they can feel it's about to start hammering again. So they've just gone in just to the edge of the woodland just to take shelter. And that's pushed our group of deer across, but they're just on our boundary now. So I'm hoping that they don't go across, but it's pushed them out of plain sight. So this is hopefully gonna give us a chance just to follow the contour and then follow this little scrub line down. We move slowly, slower than normal, with good reason. Out pop a number of deer we thought had headed into cover. There's a pricket there. I don't want to show him these too good. There's too poor a one, so we're just going to wait. 
Roy takes his time and we reach the wood. There's a buck right in front of us, broadside behind cover. It's incredible how well hidden it is. It's times like this where good optics really do pay off because the light levels are very low and we're looking from quite a lit area into underneath the canopy of the wood so it's very very dark in there and still we're able to pick up exactly what's going on and pick up just the slightest of movements you're just looking through and you're just looking for the flicker of an ear or the flick of a tail so you know, it really is worth just taking your time and go a lot slower than you can imagine possible just slow everything down just watch and just slowly approach because the moment that we go in there and they make us then that's game over for the day they'll move off into the thick forestry the other side of this valley and they won't come out again until this evening it's always the way the wind is really really consistent for a little while going straight across the deer were down here about 50 yards the wind swirled and you could feel it on the back of our necks going directly to them and they've just evaporated everything has just disappeared Roy does not need to pull the trigger today. It's an opportunity to see who is about. So we just let him go on his merry way and, and he was absolutely lovely, nice little two year old so didn't want to shoot him, he came in and we could have shot him 20 times over and I'm hoping that he may be one that we can watch on the rutting stands over the next few years coming on I think, looking at him, I think he's probably um, one of the young from my old buck that I took out he looked very very similar to him with his configuration and stuff with his second head so I really, really did like him. I want to keep him. Um, but again, when you're dealing with fallow, it's incredibly difficult because they are so transient. And especially in the southeast of England, 
the south of England, a lot of the estates are not that big, and a fallow has got such a large range, they could walk 10, 15 miles overnight, especially when it's coming up to the run. But he'll walk through a lot of other properties, um, and unfortunately, there does seem to be the general attitude at the moment with stalking to shoot whatever you see, because if you don't shoot it, somebody else will. But personally, if I get animals like that coming through, although I have lost a lot of good bucks because people on neighbouring estates have shot them where I've been leaving them, if I shoot them, I know they've definitely not got a chance. So for me personally, I'd much rather leave decent animals and let them come through um, and, and watch the development of them on the writing stands over the years. We've had some good results and the handsome young buck could well be a chip off the old block. With our presence well and truly felt, Roy moves over to some foxing. Nothing. We try again on the other side and again nothing. Now, Roy is one of several fox shooters we've spoken to of late who have noticed a significant drop-off in fox numbers this year. However, our Instagram survey suggests that the problem may be localised. I would say generally the, the numbers on our bits are definitely um, low uh, or definitely down compared to where they normally are. So, yeah, not really quite sure what's going on there. When we do find one, Roy will be ready with his new scope, the latest like her Fortis has arrived for him to play with. This little scope I put on last night um, and it was peeing down with rain and we were just, I just had to go and zero it in the, uh, in the lamp and the, I was so impressed with the image quality of it um, so I was, I was really looking forward to taking it out this morning. We've got 56 objective lens on it, magnification up to 15 and I think for a, a, a woodland stalking rifle, I mean you can, 15, I mean it's, it's perfect for, for most applications but for, for the sort of work we do it's a, a perfect little scope. No luck for Lupton today, but if the weather plays ball in the next few weeks, we will play ball too. Thank you, Roy. Now, as we mentioned in that piece, we have done an Instagram survey on fox numbers in the UK from all you fox shooters. 15% of you say there are not so many foxes this year as normal. About the same number say there are about the same number of foxes as usual. An incredible 70% say there are more foxes than usual this year. Another area for me to clear up is the difference between elk and moose. A few weeks ago we did a film, Majestic Moose Hunting with Aimpoint, and some of you have written in to say that that's not a moose, it's an elk. Well, of course it comes from the Swedish for elk, which is something like elg, forgive the pronunciation, and frankly I blame the Americans who call it a moose, and what they call an elk is a kind of deer. Anyway, if you want to watch the film, click on the link in the description below or perhaps it'll magically appear above my head and click on it there. Now for another area of confusion. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. After the Mayor of Liverpool decided to throw his weight behind a ban on the British shooting show in Liverpool last week, the City Council is about to debate hunting and shooting with Basque. Charlie's in Liverpool this evening and we'll be posting updates on the debate on our website and the Field Sports News Facebook page. Here's what Basque hopes to achieve. What, what, are Liverpool Council try, what are they trying to do, just very basically? So they've um, tried to ban the Great British Gun Show from uh, the Echo Arena, or the Liverpool Arena. Um, it's two things, it's confused. The ban on the, on the Gun Show is one thing, but there's a motion that basically says all shooting in the UK is barbaric and threatens dangerous, endangered species. And that's what we're challenging here today. We're challenging that dangerous rhetoric. We can't allow that sort of motion to pass through unchallenged. And we're hoping today that the council will listen to us, listen to the arguments that we put in favour of shooting, accept that it's more nuanced than just somebody pulling a trigger, see the benefits, listen to the benefits, and maybe reverse the motion that they're tabling. Prime Minister Boris Johnson wants to ban hunting tourism. In the Queen's speech this week, Johnson confirmed his plans to put an end to the imports of some horns and antlers to the UK. The speech came just a week after DEFRA Minister and animal rights activist Zach Goldsmith said that he would try to bring in a ban on trophy imports after a period of consultation. Johnson's actions throw into doubt UK deer stalking too. 
In Scotland alone, during the autumn of 2019, an estimated 20,000 stalking tourists, many from overseas, will take home antlers from red stags they've shot with professional deer stalkers. Johnson's move will damage wildlife conservation efforts and rides roughshod over pleas by other countries to allow them to manage their own wildlife. However, it pleases anti-hunting activists, including his girlfriend, Carrie Simmons. Chris Packham plans to spread disinformation about grouse shooting this weekend. However, the Yorkshire Pro Shooting Group, led by Simon Grace, which has calmly countered anti-grouse shooting demos by the League Against Cruel Sports throughout the summer, will be handing out literature to show the benefits of grouse shooting. The event takes place on Saturday the 20th of October from 6pm. Anyone who's free to help, please contact Simon on Facebook. Link is in the description below. North Yorkshire Police is appealing for information after a dead buzzard was found by a member of the public. The bird was found on a footpath near Sherburn in Elmet. Local vets x-rayed the carcass to reveal it contains what appears to be eight pieces of shot. Police contact details are again in the description below. A 2,300 acre sporting estate in Scotland is up for sale at a price of £2.8 million. Orcavan Estate in the Angus Glens and the Cairngorm National Park is bounded by the River Ayla and includes two farmhouses and three cottages. It has a five-year average of 10 stags and 41 hinds. The estate is for sale via Galbraith Property. Antis in Scotland want to ban a member of the royal family from opening a wildlife centre. The Duke of Kent is due to visit Fishcross Animal Rescue Centre in Clackmannockshire. However, SSPCA staff are angry because he supports hunting and is a member of the Countryside Alliance. They're trying to stop the 84-year-old cousin of the Queen from coming. Green politicians claim that reforesting Scotland will create thousands of jobs. The Scottish Greens launched a commitment to forest over grouse moors in Scotland because they say it'll create employment. They add that less than 20% of Scotland is forested and they would like to hit the European average of 40%. Landowners responded that grouse moors are unsuitable for tree planting because forestry is not permitted on deep peat where many grouse moors are located. Anti-hunting cosmetics company Lush has a pigeon problem. The Ferrells have taken over Lush's warehouse in Dorset and Lush is refusing to move them on because of Lush's founders' animal rights principles. As a result, Lush is posting out products covered in poo. Robin Fox's new rat shooting video has got UFO hunters excited. The film, which we featured in last week's Hunting YouTube, includes a UFO three minutes and 21 seconds in. Lots of comments about what it might be. The creator and star of the YouTube channel Waffenland has been injured whilst out hunting. Being a good YouTuber, Peter made sure he filmed the rescue. He broke his right leg while filming a chamois hunt in Croatia. He says jumping from one rock to another with a 20 kilogram backpack was not such a good idea. He adds that the Croatian mountain rescue flew him 120 kilometers to the central hospital in Split. He says he's still filming, but now on sticks. We wish him a speedy recovery. A Danish inventor has found a way of catching spent cartridges. Earlier this year, the Danish Hunters Association ran a competition aimed at finding solutions to shooters' plastic problems, both plastic wads and plastic cartridges. Many Danish shooters are coastal wildfowlers with semi-autos, which eject spent shells straight into the sea. The winner is Lars Nikolaisen, who has invented this cartridge catcher. The World Wildlife Fund has reported Denmark to the Bern Convention after building their boar fence. The 70 kilometer fence, which will be completed in November, aims to keep out wild boar from Germany. But the WWF says it was built without the benefit of a scientific study. More from Denmark and a Danish zoo has a poaching problem. Hansen Zoo in Rutland says poachers have shot three of its deer. The zoo's director says he found evidence of deer carcasses being dragged to the zoo car park and a van taking them away. Thanks to Per Helmseth for the Danish stories. A deer has broken into a shop in the Italian town of Cortina. Local vets sedated, captured and released the animal. Thanks to viewer Vittorio Spasciani for sending this in. A group of hunters in Wyoming are using the courts to stop mountain bikers. Called Mountain Pursuit,
the group has filed a complaint against the US Forest Service in federal court over mountain biking and ATVs in wilderness areas of western Wyoming. They want bikes limited to trails. Hunting and falconry is proving massively popular in Saudi Arabia. More than 70,000 people came to the first day of the Saudi Falcons and Hunting Exhibition in Riyadh, next to King Khalid International Airport. Hosted by the Saudi Falconry Club, this is the show's second year. Thanks to Nigel Goatry for sending in the story. And finally, the wacky racers this week are in Spain. In a film that's gone viral in Spain, poachers in cars flee from local people in 4x4s. The action takes place near the city of Toledo, near to where a hunter had three greyhounds stolen aged 3, 4 and 16 months. Police eventually catch the poachers and charge them. You are an up-to-date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, with antis employing more direct action than ever before, we have been talking to a man who spent his career finding out about the kinds of people we face. He doesn't want to be identified, and this is a short version of a long podcast. I'll give you the link for that later on. David's been off to meet an ex-copper. videoing children what you are doing <laughs> a week Papa. doesn't go by doing? without reports of antis attacking the rural community they cause criminal damage financial damage they insult and they intimidate oaps men women children even animals are in the firing line this year we have reported on the ransacking of game farms efforts to close abattoirs and the disruption of shoots and hunts so what's being done to stop it? The answer is very little. To try and help, we have enlisted an ex-metropolitan police officer who worked in a unit specialising in this kind of domestic terrorism. He says the antis are well organised and now is the time to take back the initiative. In 32 years of policing, I've had the opportunity to work on some interesting cases and investigations. But very few, in fact I'd almost say none, are as fanatical, as single-minded and as committed as the leaders of these groups. Wow. And that's what I always found a little bit chilling. Some of the people that I have followed, worked with, investigated, all of those things, they would have a day off from being a villain <laughs> sometimes. But, these yeah, yeah. but for these people, <laughs> yeah. it is a lifestyle. Now many of the people who wow. watch Field Sports Britain, I'm sure, they go shooting on Saturday, they might go fishing on Sunday, but on Monday they might put the gun or the fishing rod away, go to work. This is a 24-7 lifestyle for these people. All day, every day. And they cannot be reasoned with, and it's pointless trying to. What we mustn't forget is that the law is on our side, but maybe we need to understand the law a bit better. For example, Section 4 of the Vagrancy Act 1824 is a great little offence for those found in a barn or a yard, even before they do anything. If they are coming onto your grouse, moor, pheasant shoot, where this is a business, if this was any other business and they walked in, and caused your business to lose in the region of £10,000 for a reason, there's no reason why you wouldn't take a private prosecution out against them. Certainly in the past, during the Badger Cull, injunctions were asked for and, and obtained by private companies, by farms, to stop certain individuals entering land, and that worked very well. There are opportunities to go and ask for an ASBO if people are being continually an antisocial behaviour order. Um, coming onto your land and committing those kind of offences. They still exist, do they? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Asbos are still there. Right. And we, in the field sports world, don't use them. And lastly, we need to be that squeaky wheel. If you want action, be the victim. Be discriminated against. 
There's nothing makes a chief constable take more notice than coming in on a Sunday morning or a Monday morning and finding his crime statistics are through the roof. And driving along and having an egg thrown at you is not acceptable. You should be phoning up and making a crime report and asking for that number and then asking what they're doing about it. Are they checking CCTV? Have you had any other instances of it? And report each and every instance of it. If you're getting threats on Twitter, each one of those is a threat, is a crime. Report each one. So if you get four or five, that's five crime reports to your local police. Really? Oh yeah. Nobody likes to see that when you come in in the morning and go, oh no. Wow. Now, you know, they are resource low at the moment, but that's kind of not our problem. Somebody has decided that they don't like what you do, and so they're going to stop you to doing it. Well, how dare they? I mean, could you imagine if they decided to turn up and say, you know, I don't really want to see Tottenham play in Arsenal. I'm going to turn up and stop it. They'd be laughed out of town. But, but for so long, we have been very, very passive. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting that we start swinging fists in at them and all of that. What I'm suggesting is, is that we get organised and that we get clever and that we start asking questions of the authorities who should be protecting us. To listen to more advice from Ian, please go to our full podcast with him where you'll find other strategies to help you get organised and more empowered. Click on the link in the description. Thank you, Ian. And if you'd like to listen to the full podcast version of that, click on the link in the description below. And I do urge you to do that because it's full of really very, very useful stuff. And if you'd like us to make more public service films like that, well, we need your help. 150 of you have so far signed up on YouTube membership and Patreon. Thank you very much to all of you. You're the people who are paying for us to make films like that. But we need more. I'm going to be at Liverpool City Council this week. And I'm going to be representing the Field Sports Nation and filming what's going on when the Mayor of Liverpool debates hunting and why he turfed the British shooting show out of the Liverpool Exhibition Centre. Basque are going to be there too. Of course, Basque are paid to be there. We really, really need more memberships. If we can get a thousand, then we can employ a full time journalist. If we get 2,000, then we can employ a former intelligence officer from the Metropolitan Police who can do some investigation, who can chivy out the fake news and hand the evidence to the police. So, hit the button, please. Now, hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Nick Ridley and Ted the Cocker Spaniel are invited to a driven pheasant shoot near Ludlow in Shropshire. Ted is the only Spaniel in the line. This video is from Just One Drive and it's about the birds and Ted. Ulster Outdoors and Field Sports is out on Loch Ney in Northern Ireland in this film. He has a couple of quiet flights on the loch with a highly self-critical commentary. The guys from Virginia Outdoors Unlimited head out to a swamp to get on an early season duck hunt with the hope of bagging a few wood ducks. Viewer Gunnar Isaacson congratulates Tim Pillbeam on his majestic aim point moose hunt a few weeks ago on our channel. We made the film close to where Gunnar used to hunt moose and he attaches his film from a couple of years ago about a hunt for a great bull. Aim point has also brought out the first in its aim point hunts the globe series. This South African safari features former world's strongest man Magnus Samuelson after bush pigs and cape buffalo. In Spain the Kazar channel is bolting foxes to guns. The action takes place in Extremadura and it's more of a running game than we are used to in the UK. Falconry in North Africa in this film, this is the channel from Algeria which has them flying their birds and praising Allah when they connect. And finally I met a field magazine writer Adrian Danger last week who is charming and I will add charmingly old school. He surprised me by recommending videos of Ali from Alabama who specialises in noodling. Find out more in this video. That's it for this week, I've put all these films into a playlist for you, click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well that is it for this week if you haven't done so please pop over to our website fieldsportschannel.tv where you can find out how to join the field sports nation and help fund us pop those fake news balloons uh, which are floating over so many of us this hunting season you can also click to like us on facebook follow us on twitter like us on instagram subscribe to us on youtube and of course, best of all, pop your email address and you'll get a 
newsletter about this show every week. This show, Field Sports Britain, at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>